The bad news is confirmed. Phil Dracovic is doubtful for the remainder of the season. All of this and more on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black here. Thank you all for listening. This is one of those episodes I know many of you are going to be like, it's going to be, it's going to stink. We're going to get through it together, though. We're going to talk about Phil Dracovic's injury. He has a hand injury, and he is doubtful for the remainder of the season. Tar- terrible news for Boston College, as he was going to be, you know, the pinnacle ACC quarterback, the one that could take BC places, and now he's gone. But we're going to talk about the whole situation. So let's break it down. So on Sunday, Boston College... Um, released news that, you know, Phil Dracovic was going to have an MRI on his hand, which would then give the results to Jeff Halfley, and then hopefully we'd all find out. Now, Monday rolls around, we still haven't heard anything, and um, we get the depth chart that comes out, and it's Phil Dracovic's still on there. Now, I don't read too much into the depth chart. I've learned over the years that coaching staffs don't put too much uh, thought into that. Once a player is... Uh, out, they'll take them out, but for the most part, if there's question marks or things, they'll keep them on there. Just, there's no strategic advantage taking them off. So, he was still on there, uh, you know, people started reading into it, and then it was like 2.30 or 3 o'clock, boom, the news broke. What ended up happening, it wasn't the school that announced it. They, they've they always been kind of hesitant to release any medical information. I'm not sure if it's a HIPAA thing or a strategic advantage, but they don't usually release that information. Who released it? Phil Dracovic himself, who went on Instagram and showed a picture of what looked like a heavily wrapped hand. I couldn't tell if it was a cast or just bandages. Um, and it just said Newton Wellesley Hospital on it. So that kind of uh, really gave you the the lowdown of what was going on, right? You saw like, oh gosh, if that's his thrown hand, that's, that's bad news. So you saw that you know, still some optimism. We're still thinking, okay, maybe it's a little thing. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe, you know, he'll miss a couple weeks. That's okay. We can handle that. Nope. He, at, at about four o'clock, we get, or four thirty, we get an uh, article from Pete Thamel, who I've told you is the one that always breaks this information, saying that uh, Jakovic was doubtful to return this season and that they had surgery on his hand and that he would not, probably not return. So that ended it, and then BC announced it officially. They also added on that Aaron Boomeri is out for the year. When I heard there was a hip injury, we talked about this last week. We knew he would probably be out, but it looks like you're now out. You're starting kicker, and more importantly, you're starting quarterback, and that's bad news for Boston College. Um, now, from here, where does Boston College go? What does Boston College do without the quarterback that threw for 2,500 yards, 17 touchdowns last year, and many had projected as a first-round draft pick in 2022 if he decided to go. So where do they go? They go to Dennis Grossell. And I know that there's some people that are like not Dennis Grossell fans, and there's some of you out there that are like crazy Dennis Grossell fans. And I I love you guys. I think you guys are great. Um, Dennis Grossell threw for 520 yards last year against UVA's defense. Um, He, you know, he's not the same quarterback as Djokovic. Djokovic is a physical specimen. He's hard to take down. But but Grossell is manageable. This is not a huge, like massive drop off. You're not going from Djokovic to a freshman. You're going from Djokovic to a guy that's been part of the system for a couple years now. One that Frank Signetti has done an excellent job of um, grooming and improving. He threw for 75% of his passes last year. You know, Grossell can do it. He can do a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, what he does is he's very he's very quick. We've seen him move, and it's surprising how quick he can be. But he also has a good arm. We, you know, last year against the Cavaliers in that la- that season finale, he threw some passes that were incredible. The keys are him are to him. You know, he has all of those weapons, and I think that's the most exciting part. He's got you know Zay Flowers, Trey Berry, C.J. Lewis, Kobe White, and now he gets to work with them. Now last week, you know, he went in against UMass. He threw for two hundred and something yards. Uh, he had a big pass to Trey Berry, a big pass to. Um, Zay Flowers, but for the most part, it seemed like Boston College was going into that game with Dracovic or Grossell running the ball, and so he didn't get a chance to really pass it. I expect this week Grossell getting more of a chance to air it out because they need to see what they 
have with him. See how he fits in with this offense this year and see what he can do. Um, and he's going to have to do it because, you know, now you look at the schedule without Dracovic, it gets a little bit more hairy. Like, you know, we were talking on this podcast. Many of us had predictions that BC is going to beat Clemson. BC is going to go nine and three. That's tougher now. But to be fair, injury is a part of football. This is not an excuse. Teams have to have depth to be able to handle this. And losing someone like Dracovic stinks. He's your star of your team. But teams have done this in the past. Teams have gone through and and been successful with their backup quarterbacks. You can go through down the list of teams that have done it. I mean, last year, Clemson did it with uh, DJ Uyagalale. And, you know, other teams have done it as well. But you have to think, too, you know, the part of you, I'm sure, are out there, you're thinking like, why does this happen to Boston College every single year? Like every year that there's something positive, there's something that happens that rips your heart out. And it feels like this again. But, you know, I don't think it's that dire yet. I think we need to see what Grossell can do against good offenses. I mean, good defenses, what he does as a consistent starting quarterback with this team and that offensive line in front of him. And maybe he will surprise some people and really have a good year. And uh, in a moment, we'll talk about what the, the future holds for Phil Dracovic because there's a lot of options out there and we'll kind of dive in and break them all down. But first, let's chat about prize picks. Prize picks offers every sport you can think of like NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, MLB, soccer, MMA, and more. They offer football props, you name it, and then anyone in the world, they offer everything. And now right now, if you go to prize picks, They're going to match your deposit up to $100. And now all you need to do is you got to wait for their special deals. We'll tell you what those are in a little bit. Use their award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com or go to your App Store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Let's talk a little bit about Rock Auto as well. Rock Auto is a family-owned business that have been offering great deals to customers for over 20 years. Why spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or your car dealership when you can save at rockauto.com? Rock Auto has reliably post low prices for everyone. Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional mechanic, they have everything. You just go in, you put in their make and model of your car, boom, they'll come up with everything that you need, whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even a new carpet. Now go and explore their easy-to-use website and find the solution that you need. And when you do, right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com this is locked on boston college aj black here we are talking uh, about the injury to phil dracovic who probably will not play again in 2021 this is devastating news you know boston college fans have had their hopes set high this entire season because of the talent uh, around boston college but most specifically they actually have a quarterback that could go toe-to-toe with any team in the country and now they lose phil dracovic you know so the, the, it's sad for boston college fans it's sad that you know their the expectations of a year that could have been something special might not be and that stinks but also this is tough for Phil Dracovic. You know, just looking at a guy who in the past year has been hurt three times. He hurt, got himself hurt against Clemson. He got himself hurt against Louisville. And now he's hurt against UMass. And so we're looking at a guy who was supposed to have this monster season. He was supposed to be all ACC, you know, uh, a contender uh, for the the Manning Award, for the Davey O'Brien Award. You name it, he was supposed to be that guy. Now he doesn't get to do any of it. So what does Phil Dracovic do? He has two big options that he can look at for the next year. Now he's a junior, so he still has eligibility left. He could come back next year and decide, hey, you know, I need to go back. I need to get more uh, experience before I head off to the NFL. Remember, he's only started, what, eight games, nine games now? And, you know, he hasn't had a full season. He needs to get, you know, an experience to get those reps, to get that film out there so that coaching staffs can go, oh, you know, there's a guy that could be a first round draft pick and he's going to make a ton of money for us. So that would be the first thing. And, you know, he has, you know, when you look at the talent around him, yes. Alec Winstrom may go, he's going to go, and, you know, Zion Johnson's going to go probably as well. I mean, he's going to go because they're both seniors. And the, Zay Flowers, he could definitely leave. But 
this this BC program is building depth. So yes, you lose Alec Lindstrom, but you bring in Drew Kendall. Drew Kendall will be the, the center next year. Good, solid. I mean, everyone knows who Drew Kendall is. You bring him back. You bring in Ozzy Trapilla to fill in for uh, Zion Johnson. Boom, you got two guys already. You bring back Z- uh, Tyler Vrabel, Jack Conley, and Christian Mahogany. Boom, your offensive line isn't really going to take that big of a step back. It will because Zion's another worldly talent, but... You still got some talent up there up front. And then all that offense. I mean, Jaden Williams is a freshman. He could be Zay Flowers next year. Now, Zay Flowers, again, is a generational wide receiver at Boston College. But Jaden Williams, we've seen him do some big things so far. So there is the possibility. Jakovic could scan this landscape here and go, hmm, you know, this team's still going to be good next year. I might want to come back and take my shot. The second option for Djokovic is he could head to the NFL. Now, he is 21 years old. He's turning 22 in November. You know, he's getting up there in age. You know, I don't know how many years he wants to stay in the college levels, not making a ton of money. But maybe Djokovic feels you know, all in on himself that, you know, you know, he doesn't have a ton of film out there. You you know, he had those games last year, but really nothing this year. He played three quarters against UMass and one drive against Colgate. Maybe he thinks, Hey, when it's, you know, the combine or the, or uh, pro days, I can get in front of the coaches and show them what I'm able to do. That's a, that's a bit of a risk, but you know, he's getting up there. You know, he's already been redshirted at Notre Dame. Maybe he doesn't want to stay at college. Maybe he wants to go out there and try to bet on himself. And maybe he wants to see if he can make more money at the pro level. It's an option. And that's what I really thought he was going to do if he played a complete season. It made sense, right? He was going to be 21, uh, looking at 22. He's getting ready for that NFL draft age. Boom. No, you know, maybe he doesn't want to be there in college as a 23-year-old next year. It's That's a definite possibility as well. So, at the end of the day, Trakovic has two options. If you were to ask me before the season, I would have told you I had I knew exactly what he was going to do. He's going to go to the draft. Now, I don't. I don't know what drafts are going to look at him like. As I said at the beginning of the segment, he's been hurt three times. And I know NFL uh, college football is a violent sport. I watch it. Some of those hits make my my bones shudder. However, you know, when you have a guy like Trakovic who does not shy away from hits. He does not shy away from contact. Scouts may see that and get a little worrisome because you don't want to spend a high draft pick on a guy like Dracovic who doesn't know how to slide away from a hit or doesn't know how to run out of bounds. Because as we've seen week in and week out, Dracovic is not afraid. And that's a that's a that's a gift and a curse for him. He does not seem to care at all about getting hit. Uh, but he's been hurt now three times and scouts are going to see that and go, oof, this is a guy that will wear on his tires. He's only played a whole year and he's already been hurt three times. What is his um, what is his durability going to look like? Is this a guy that's playing at a style that's not sustainable in the NFL? And I think he has to come back. I really do. I think he has to come back to show, hey, uh, you know, maybe now this injury is going to show him like, you know, I-, I can't take hits like this anymore. Like I could take some hits, but like I got to be more careful because I'm going to get hurt. So we'll have to see. Now this is now we're into Dennis Grossell area era here. On tomorrow's show, we'll look at all the options of who's behind Grossell because we're now moving down the depth chart a little bit. We'll have a little bit of a conversation about that as well, as lo- along with some basketball recruiting news from the weekend that I haven't had a chance to get to because the starting quarterback got hurt. So we'll get into that all next week, but we'll I mean all, all tomorrow's show, but we'll wait to do that. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna have Mitch Wolf on to talk about games from around the country. You'll get to. Hear hear his thoughts on Steve Adazio's latest um, meltdown and all the good stuff going on in the ACC. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial pot deposit just, just signing up. Just don't forget to use promo code Locked On. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So head on over to Bet Online and use promo code Locked On. 
They're your online sportsbook experts. This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black here. And with me, I have Mitchell Wolf, who is back again to talk about college football games from the ACC, from some of our old friends with, uh, you know, finger uh, notations here, and uh, other games from around the country. Mitch, how's it going? Uh, it's great for us. You know, the rest of the ACC might not be having the best time, but we'll get into that. So, yeah, let's get into the ACC uh, in their very rough weekend, part two. Uh, let's start, first start off with Rutgers, who took care of business against Syracuse on the Dino Babers is getting fired tour. 17-7, um, to 7, Syracuse just looked completely out of sorts. How did that – did you watch any of that game or hear about it? I, I did actually because the, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that enjoys like really bad college football games when it doesn't involve BC, i.e. the Wake Forest game from 2015. But because I kept seeing, oh, this game's at 0-0 at halftime, which it was. And then you think of that meme of um, oh, a Frank Beamer where he yep. has both his arms up where it's 0-0 at the end of regulation. Yep. <laughs> and this, this game was uh, like everything you dream of for a terrible college football game. You, we saw a good bit of a former BC quarterback, Johnny Langan, playing basically a wildcat quarterback role. But there's also a weird play where uh, I think almost Dino Babers almost got thrown out of the game for like yelling at the refs and saying, you know, things you don't say, which was, you know, another just <laughs> black mark mm-hmm. on his record. So, but I mean, I mean, Rutgers are, is Rutgers for real? I think it might be happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they look like, you know, look at their recruiting right now. Yeah, and, and, I mean, that's, that's the Shiano effect. And I don't know how long that's going to last um, because I, I get the suspicion, and it's just me. People disagree with me, but the first moment that, you know, Michigan goes and after they have, like, a good year <laughs> and a Michigan hires him, then Rutgers goes right back. Ooh, that's fun. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah, that was a, that was a dumpster fire game. And then you look at some of the other games this weekend, and uh, two teams that I had pegged as on the ascent are um, not there. <laughs> well, let's start with the first one with NC State that looked completely overmatched against Mississippi State, um, losing twenty four ten. What was your what was the deal with that game, Mitch? Yeah, I mean, this is wild because, like, I because, like I said, like I liked NC State a lot too. I said I really liked all aspects of their team except the quarterback. And you know, when you play Mississippi State now and Mike Leach, like you know exactly what you're going to get on offense. So it's weird when you still can't prepare for it and stop it properly. So you know, I think obviously we misjudge NC State. NC State, you know, maybe we got a little excited when they beat when they you know crushed one of the worst teams in college football in South Florida. But so, you know, this was a team that a lot of people pegged as a, you know, team that could finish second in the Atlantic division, a competitor with BC. And, you know, again, BC didn't have the perfect game, like we said last time against a terrible opponent, but you know, that game, as we've said, pretty much the whole off season, that game between the Eagles and the Wolfpack is going to be really big. Yeah. And the, the part that struck me was, you know, with NC state was Ricky person, uh, you know, that, you ended week one and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, he's the best running back in the ACC. And, and you know, they're playing Mike Leach and Mike Leach has never had a good defense. Like mm-hmm. you never expect a Mike Leach team to have a good defense. He ran eight times for 19 yards. So you, you it's already early and it's ACC football at its best. So you just don't know what to expect and everything's going on in its head. And the final game that was like, okay, what is going on here? I fell asleep. I have to admit, everyone who listens knows I'm a new dad uh, for part two. And part one, my my oldest one is even more exhausting than the baby. Um, But I fell asleep in the midst of this game. Um, Florida State loses on a Hail Mary pass to Jacksonville State as an FCS team takes down the team that I thought after barely losing to Notre Dame would be the second best team in the ACC. And uh, nope, wrong. So what, what were your thoughts about that game? Yeah, I mean, I think what we have to say is that this tells us a little more about Notre Dame than we thought, given Notre Dame's struggles against Toledo, who's a solid MAC program, but still, um, you know, that's not a good game for them after barely getting by Florida State, who we might know now is a, still a pretty bad team. So, you know, I think a lot of people thought Mike Norvell might finally at least get it going in the right direction this year through two games. I don't know. That seems tough. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it, that was uh, that. It, and if you've not seen the Hail Mary at the end, um, uh, also Mike, he lied. He he just lied because he said they were in too high coverage and there was one safety deep. They, he just lied. <laughs> I was gonna say his coverage scheme there was very very suspect. <laughs> yeah, like people get on prevent defense, but like that's the time when you run prevent defense and it usually works. I also I want to bring up one one thing before we kind of move on. I think Virginia might be quite good. Yeah, they've they uh, I can't remember who they played week one, but they blew them out. They blew out 
Illinois, who people kind of thought was going to be a good team when they played Nebraska, which, you know, it is what it is. I'm sorry. I keep getting texts and they're dinging. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Virginia might – Brandon Armstrong's looking incredible. He threw 400 yards, five touchdowns. They could be something special. Yeah, they were surprising. And with Miami, Miami barely beat Appalachian State, which I, I, on paper it looks like a, a tougher game. And then you realize Chase Bryce is the quarterback for Appalachian State. And I don't know. <laughs> I think I, maybe that might have been on more, more so Duke than him. <laughs> yeah. And looking at Duke this year who, you know, was losing for a decent bit to North Carolina A and T, and they did bring it, get out the win, but still. <laughs> so let's let's get out of the ACC because the rest of the games were kind of just cakewalk games. There was nothing else super surprising um, in, on that slate. And let's look at UMass and UConn. We already talked about UMass, but what happened to UConn football this weekend? Okay, so this is the third installment of UConn football, and this one is as bad as any other one that we've talked about as they got shellacked by Purdue, 49 nothing. And, Mitch, watching this game, I had joked all up until the season, uh, beginning of this game that UMass and UConn would be an epic, you know, just, you know, wet to- like a wet uh, – like a – like a just a bad fight, right? It's gonna I, got, be, I got you. Yeah. I can, I'm I'm losing the the analogy I'm getting there. Um, <laughs> two wet noodles. Um, there you go, battling each other. But at this point, I think UConn will lose by double digits, like twenty plus to UMass. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. I mean, Purdue. You know, Purdue is not. They haven't really gotten to the point where people thought they were or, or were going to go earlier in the Jeff Brom era. But still, man, getting just beating the crap out of by Purdue, you know, that's just not, not just getting nothing on the board is really pathetic. And, you know, obviously going through a coaching change and I can't even talk about them with a straight face. It's just pathetic. Uh, but I mean, again, I, I think we really need to talk about can't, like canceling that Clemson game. Cause th- that might put some people in physical danger. Yeah. They're, they're in big trouble there. And I still, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with my thought that, and I don't think any BC assistant will even look at that job. Um, I don't think that – I think they're smart enough to know that, yeah, you get a head coaching job, but you're going to get – you're going into a position where you're going to get clobbered every week and then not be out of a job in three years. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's our UConn, and then we already talked about UMass. All right, let's go visit our old friend in Colorado State, Steven Dazio. And I'm going to tell you a little story about me watching this game because I am a sick individual who loves watching him fail, and I can't get over him. Um, it's 10 o'clock at night, and uh, my wife is cleaning baby bottles. I have the baby, and I'm watching TV. I'm like, what's on? Oh, Vanderbilt in Colorado State. Mitch had sent me a, a – um, what was the what was the name of the um, article that you saw? That it's, So it's from Tom Fornelli at CBS Sports, and it's like the bottom 25 game of the week of the century where <laughs> he just picks like the two worst teams in his like bottom 25 of the um, – college football that are playing each other and just so happened that Vanderbilt who lost to Eastern Tennessee state last week was playing Colorado state who was also fresh off uh, an FCS loss. So I watched the first half, I think, first of all, props to Colorado state. Those uniforms were kind of cool. I have to admit they had some really kind of cool coloring with it. And I'm watching this, and B- and Colorado State is kicking the crap out of them. David Bailey has two you know, former BC running back. David Bailey has two touchdowns. They're using him in the pass game, which props to Daz for figuring that out. <laughs> um, and I'm like, and, and then it's like 10:45. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And you know, Colorado State looks like they're going to win this game. And I go to bed, and I wake up, and they lost. And I think they scored another three points. <laughs> rest of the game and and Vanderbilt who looked completely clueless the first half figured it out and I'm sure Daz probably clenched up a little bit and did his all (laughs) I think I did see a tweet so the effect of Daz made a very questionable end of half decision involving you know turtling and not trying to get a field goal which again would have tied the game uh, or at least kept the game tied and maybe got forced overtime but yeah it looks like uh, Colorado State scored 14 the first half didn't score in the third when Vanderbilt got two touchdowns and then scored again in the fourth, but Vanderbilt ultimately prevailed. I mean, looking at this stat line, there's really not a great reason why Colorado State lost this game. Should have lost this game. Like they ran the ball decently well. They've had they have a very good tight end. I'll say that Trey McBride. He's going to oh, yeah. be a draft prospect. He's a good player. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I I can't really explain it because like Vanderbilt. I mean, Vanderbilt is kind of in a similar position to BC a little bit in that they have those very stringent academic restrictions. So they can't really compete as well in the SEC, but they've established like a staff with a ton of NFL experience. So 
it, it might take a little while. Maybe they'll turn the corner a little bit and, you know, get getting off to a nice start by beating Colorado State. <laughs> yeah, and the other BC-related game uh, was probably the game of the week, and I was stunned. I missed part of it because I didn't realize it was that early. It was Oregon and Ohio State, and Anthony Brown had a nice game against the Buckeyes. Yeah, I mean, so, I, so I'll so i pull back the curtain a little bit. I actually live in Columbus, and I was tailgating for this game, so I was standing you know, right outside the stadium for the first half and then watched the second half at a bar and slashed at home. Um, and, you know, the story really is – Ohio State's defense and how terrible they are, especially at stopping the run. Anthony Brown, you know, there he made plays to you know keep drives going. He there were a lot of missed passes. You know, it was a very typical quote good Anthony Brown game. You know, I'm expecting there to be a come crashing back down to earth one later in the season that'll you know break Oregon fans' hearts where it'll just he'll throw like three interceptions and just be terrible. But you know, they were able to come out and beat Ohio State in pretty much a shootout, and it was it was a very fun game to watch. I'll say that. Yeah, and uh, congratulations to them. You know, it's great to see a former BC player doing Mm -hmm. so well, and uh, that's where it's at. So, Mitch, uh, that's going to kind of wrap up our conversation about um, out-of-conference games and ACC games. Let's uh, give a chance to plug some of your stuff again. Go ahead. Sure. So I'm at Mitchell T. Wolf on Twitter. Uh, Like I said, you know, we're mostly writing about BC stuff right now, but I also cover uh, the Steelers. If there are any BC Steelers fans out there, you can find my work covering that team there. Um, and you know, I, I pretty, I'm pretty much posting everything on that Twitter. So, you know, just go follow me there and you'll be able to find what I'm doing. All right. In a moment, we're going to continue our conversation or I'll continue our conversation about everything going on with BC sports. Check us out in a moment.